anything, guys. I'm trying to be serious, and this little melt in the kitchen. You can hear him giggling away. Giggling his little heart out. I think he's a big man, yeah. Oh, and the phone's ringing, guys. Yeah, guys, so welcome back, guys. Welcome back to podcast 43. I need to do more of these, guys. Um, and I hope you're doing all right. I hope my PS4 isn't too loud in the background. But, um, yeah, it is October the 14th, 2020. And this year needs no explanation nor is introduction because yeah um so i was just looking on the russia today uh news channel um trump uh he had covid he's all better now apparently um apparently he still he thinks he's immune now uh who knows uh i'm not even going to go into detail about this virus because what's the point like that's what we've been doing all year um but there's new lockdowns uk uh, you know, around the UK, uh, in certain areas, most parts further up north, London yet to be fully locked down. Uh, things are getting more serious than they have been for a while. And Boris again is flip flopping, not knowing what he's doing, putting measures in when they're too late, all this. And yeah, it's just a mad year in total, and like all round. In a good way and a bad way, like, look at the Premier League, that's back, and it's been crazy, I mean, now we have an international break, well, it's almost done now, but tonight, England, big game for them, big game, can't remember who we're playing, hey Siri, who are England playing tonight, Let's see what Siri says, I'm on it, okay, I found this on the web for who are England playing tonight, check it out. Wait, who are we playing? That's interesting because you should know that. So yeah, guys, we are playing Denmark against Christian Eriksen's team and Hoiberg. So one formerly of Spurs, one of Spurs. Should be a good game, guys. And yeah, I don't... When it comes to international football, I lose a bit of interest sometimes. Um, just because the Premier League was so good this year. Especially this time round. It kind of stopped all the action. And uh, yeah, it's weird. So since then, I've been watching a bit of NFL, a bit of NBA... The Lakers won the championship, NBA championship, after 10 years of heartbreak and of waiting and trying to win it. Um, so many talented players, Rondo, Howard, Davis, of course LeBron, having won his fourth, his fourth uh, championship now. But at first with Lakers, and that's history in the making because 10 years ago today, well, 10 years ago, the, this season, they uh, they won it with Kobe for the last time, RIP. Um, so there's a big, you know, they dedicated this one to him in some ways because it's been, you know, tragic for, for basketball, losing such a legend, and tragic for the world. And since then, I've, I've got into basketball a lot more because I see what he meant to these people, um, these fans. And yeah, so it was, I didn't really want the Lakers to win. I was supporting the underdog. Miami Heat in this case, his old team of course, the team I support is the San Antonio Spurs because they're Spurs anyone with Spurs in their name I've got to support them, you know and I like their story and the, the way they won it in the past Tim Duncan, some of the legends they've had over the years, you know Kawhi Leonard um, DeRozan today 
But um, yeah, when it comes to sports, I've got these newfound passions. Of course, NFL October sixth last year. I was at the Raiders game against the Chicago Bears at the Spurs Stadium. So that was amazing. Because we don't just show football now. We show NFL games too. So that was a completely mad atmosphere. And yeah, a year on, here we are. Stuck at home. But yeah, um, I'm just... Having seen this weekend's NFL fixtures. The one's just gone. Um, if you ever saw, if you saw the Dallas Cowboys game, one of their players, anyway, the quarterback for Dallas, uh, Prescott, I think his name is, he dislocated his ankle, so, ouch, and I've seen it, it's horrible, in, like, when he realised, and yeah, he's not going to be playing for a while, so, I mean, maybe if you, you don't even watch NFL, but a dislocated ankle is a lot, he's got to have surgery and stuff, nah, <laughs> But yeah, it's a difficult time because, well, for everyone, I mean, because there's a risk of going back into lockdown. Many places already are. We're talking about postcode lockdowns. In some ways, they've acted too late. Some rules are pointless. Um, you know, closing pubs at 10 doesn't really stop people getting infected, does it? No. Because you can be in there all day and easily get it in that time before 10 p.m. you know so I don't know I don't know these rules they don't make sense to me or a lot of people I mean it's preventing us from doing a lot of things but I've learned a lot about myself and like how to approach life really it's like taking a pause I've said it before I've said it many times appreciate what you've got and then moving on from there but like it's been too long now, like, being alone with your thoughts for too long is not good. Um, I've done way too much gaming, I mean, what else can I do really, apart from talk to you guys, you know, upload videos, or try to anyway. And of course, during lockdown I got even more views because everyone's at home. Now, more pe since more people have been back the last two or three months, it's been not so many views. Um, even less than before COVID. Uh, I don't know what that is. It's strange. Of course, like now, people, a lot of people are working. The ones that are obviously haven't got time. But when we go into lockdown, I might get more views. But I'm not wishing on I'm not wishing on another lockdown. Um, you know, I, I want to be free. We don't we all. But safety, you know, how safe are we with this? All this. You know, people talk about liberty and freedom and all this. I mean, I think here, we're a bit more freedom than maybe the US. Um, because, you know, there there's our freedom of speech, all this. Um, they've got rules like the right to bear arms. Like, come on. I mean, I'm not going to get into that and get political. But, you know, freedom of speech. Do they have freedom of speech? I don't think so. They think they do. I mean, here, even here, but, like, how free do you want to be? Like, what, you're allowed to openly offend people, yeah? Freedom of speech, yeah. But, I don't know. I feel like, well, I, would, I wouldn't I would personally, well, I, I don't know, but I, w I wouldn't want to live in America, I wouldn't choose to live in America, having a choice. If you're born somewhere, it's different, but if I lived there, I would probably leave by now. I can't decide on the best angle here, guys. But no, I mean, different cultures, different strokes for different folks. It's not an easy uh, time at the moment, even with or without COVID. The elections in America are making people crazy. So it's going to be another civil war or something. And that's what you're hearing about on the news. And then here we've got our own problems. We've got trade deals to worry about other than Brexit around Brexit other than COVID, I mean. Um, I mean, I haven't watched as much news to be as clued up as I should be, probably from doing a podcast. But uh, it's whatever in it, really. It is what it is this year. 
and you can be negative as much as you want. I mean, when I'm not being negative when I say it's like prevented me from doing a lot of, a lot of things. I'm being realistic and like honest because it has stopped me from doing a lot, stopped a lot of people, able or not. But I haven't felt more. I don't know. It's felt difficult at times for my personal situation. Uh, you feel more closed off from the world because you are more closed off because you know there's only so much going out I did normally anyway um, physically only so much I could manage but now it's like I'm stuck at home I just crave the outdoors now like normal life like interaction with other people which you know everyone needs and helps with your mental your mental well-being and now everyone's just stuck on Instagram and social media my brother's having lunch so there's noise but everyone's addicted to social media because they've had nothing else to do really and now people are getting further into negative feelings and depression uh, because of social media and I've cut down my usage of Instagram, Facebook and all that do it to check up on family and stuff like that and just keep updated but Instagram is more to post stuff for my channel uh, to advertise my videos and communicate with a few friends of mine apart from that I don't really use Instagram as much I, I've reduced the amount of time I use my phone after I saw that documentary um, about data usage and like how they use your data and they manipulate you for advertising and stuff uh, I can't the social dilemma that's what it was on Netflix and I've recommended it to you guys before um, but yeah, the social dilemma that got me thinking you know, you look at your phone and you want to go on, like now I'm looking at my phone and I kind of want to go on my phone it's just battling that or occupying yourself with other things like I mean for example yesterday I had a proper off day and I just didn't feel up to do anything really um, so I thought okay today I'm going to approach things differently, I'm going to make some content, you know, or do something different to what I normally do. And obviously, at some point I'll end up gaming, because I'll be with my mates, you know. It's the only way to keep in touch with them. So you might think, oh yeah, he's 27, isn't it a bit childish to be playing video games? Or no, I mean, I haven't really got a choice. And if it's helping my well-being, then so be it. It's keeping me off my phone, because I'm going to get more depressed being on my phone than playing video games. I hope this is working. Because my laptop is acting up, it's acting crazy. It's so weird. So yeah, if this works or not. Uh, thinking about what I've been saying guys, uh, it's like Patrice Evra after Spurs bad United. He's like, you know, normally I'm a positive guy, but today I'm just not. <laughs> Wait, you remember, if you see that interview, He's just so depressed. He's like, I'd rather be anywhere else than here right now. You know? I mean, from my point of view, normally I am a positive person. I'm not, I haven't, I don't suffer from uh, depression, but I have good days and bad days. No one's perfect all the time. Regardless if it's a medical thing or not. Like, from your mental standpoint. You know, and, you know, people just assume too much of people, like, they 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 need perspective and need to see where other people are coming from, where their situation is. And so me, the time when lockdown was kind of lifted, people really trying to get back to normal, enjoying life, it made me feel worse because I still knew the risk was high for me. Of course, I had great days out in between this time, but only so many I could count on my hand. Not that many, you know, and we had to be careful and... Not fear, but the worry was always there, like, of other people and other people not caring. Because I care, but you don't know if the person next to you really cares. And you'll see people in certain situations without a mask. I'm not the type, I'm not going to go to their face, excuse me, you put your mask on. Like. But, I mean, it depends. I had a technician come out the other day to look at my, uh, some of my equipment I got here. And I was like, where's your mask, you know? put your gloves on, he had gloves on, but I was like, where's your mask, you know, 
and people, you know, really respect your wishes and they'll put a mask on. But in public, you just get some idiots. Um, I'm not condemning anyone who doesn't wear a mask. If you've got a reason, fine. Um, I know people personally that haven't worn masks in places. Um, but yeah, it's just silly. Um, you're going to get told off by someone eventually. It's inevitable. If you're in a shop without a mask and there's, there's food around, you know. In the supermarket, like, you can't be having that. And so it's been difficult, like, over the summer it was fine, but now it's just, it just feels more miserable because the weather's miserable. But I feel like in the UK, as people, it doesn't matter how crap the weather is, we can still have fun. We still go in a pub and get sloshed till the morning, till the early hours of the morning. We can't do that now. We can do that at home. But I mean, there's only so much drinking I can do in front of my parents, you know. And being in lockdown, you learn a lot about your family being around them that much. You're a bit fed up in some ways. Um, so I was kind of happy when I went back to work. Whenever, well, my brother hasn't, but when everyone else did, I was kind of happy. Uh, free time, you know. But I've been gaming a lot, That like keeping in touch with my teammates that way, or some of them anyway, or the Padgett Football World uh, community and... Uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, we can get back to it. But we don't even know when, you know. People people keep changing uh, their opinions on when we're going to get back because the situation hasn't got better, really. It got better and it got worse again. It's kind of all our, not our faults, but the government's for the way they reopened things. And yeah, we needed our freedom because people get going mad indoors. People without gardens. I'm very lucky I have a garden. Uh, parks nearby. Not everyone is that fortunate. And a lot of people didn't realise that, you know. The richer someone is, there were less... The richer people were less affected by the day-to-day -day stuff. Like, they could afford to, afford to buy extra toilet paper and all this. Don't know why you need extra toilet paper. Um, but all this... These, this panic buying... It's difficult for some people with less of a budget and, um, you know, while some people enjoyed their furlough, some people are still working, um, you know, so it's not, not everyone's in the same boat, but everyone's year has been affected in some way. And just from my point of view is that I've been gaming a lot more. I've always liked video games, but now it's just, it's nothing else to do, really. Of course, I'm making videos, but not on the same level I was, like, because I'm, I'm not able to because of 2020 being 2020. But I can't see it as a negative. I can see it as a learning curve, you know. Something to learn from it and when it's done, look back on and go, okay, it can't get any worse than that, you know. It can only get better in some ways. And once this has passed us, that'll be the way. And uh, I'm going to value things I didn't value so much a lot more. Like freedom, like being able to go where you want, drink where you want. You know, and there will always be politicians and people like that that are hypocrites and that confuse everyone and think they're doing the right thing when maybe they're making it worse. There will always be that, that won't change. I mean, as annoying as that is, you can't just literally be angry at that all the time. Go your own life to live. For once, maybe think about yourself. I mean, some people are too selfish. Some people are just quite the opposite and don't ever consider themselves a bit of you time, you know, a bit of me time, whatever you call it. Like, consider how you, you're feeling, not about how everyone else. Of course, I'm not saying go out of your way to upset other people, um, but consider yourself sometimes, if you're okay, instead of asking everyone else. Uh, for those people who are like that, some people are just selfish anyway, and they'll go around not wearing a mask, but that's, that's them, that's their loss if they get COVID, and serves them right if they do, certain people, you know, not everyone not, because some people are not wearing a mask, they have a reason, so you can't just go up to someone and go, oh, you're not wearing a mask, put your mask on, I mean, maybe you can, but you might find out that they've got a reason, so think about the way you're approaching other people. But yeah, I mean, there is two types of people, those who overly consider themselves 
and those who don't consider themselves. And yeah, I was rudely interrupted by my brother just laughing in a... He's... <laughs> I can't do anything, guys. I try to be serious and this little melt in the kitchen. You can hear him giggling away. Giggling his little heart out. I think he's a big man, yeah. Oh, and the phone's ringing, guys. Um, but yeah, when it comes to gaming, I won the new FIFA. I'm gonna kill him, guys. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I've just committed murder on my own brother. <laughs> Imagine. But yeah, that's what lockdown makes you feel. Uh, with this annoying family banter. And yeah, there's so many people that I haven't seen for so long. Uh, Zoom call, tell me what you want, but it's not the same. As many as many Zoom calls as you like. Like. Zoom just, like, the name just annoys me. Um, but yeah, keeping in touch with people is key in this time. And I feel like me, when I'm checking on other people, like, am I doing it because I care about them or because I crave attention? Because don't we all? Yeah, <laughs> not from you. You're saying I do crave attention, but... We all crave some sort of attention. Is it selfish of me to... Well, I'm texting other people and asking how they are. And maybe so they'll ask how I am, but just to start a conversation, to check up on people because uh, that's important. Um, you know, because you don't know how people, what people are going through. Because a lot of people won't say, they say, "Yeah, I'm fine." How you know, they won't actually uh, get it out. And sometimes it's good just to let it out. And you got certain people, certain people that are around me and my family and friends, where I do do that, and we just share banter or anything take your mind off it but some people like the mentality I, I notice it they're a bit down because of this whole thing but you can't afford to do that and speaking with my friend uh, in the town where my grandparents are from in Italy um, she was like there's a case in the town or if it's a village really but there's a case and someone has it and you know we don't know for how long they've had it so who could be infected we don't know um, and I'm just trying to calm my down. It's like, look, I live in London. There's how many mi how many million cases, or however many there are. You know, there's loads here. They got one, and they're worried. You know, so just trying to ease people, ease people's like emotions in some ways. I feel like I'm good at that. Like, as oh my god, it's coughing in the background. But yeah, I feel like I'm good at uh, asking other people how they are and. Checking in on my friends and family, certain people, um, you know, some more than others. They're just how it is. Like with some of my cousins, I get on a lot more. Uh, the ones that have been to England or lived in England for a bit, you know, I know them a lot more. I've got more confidence with them. You know, there's certain people you just talk to, and I'm always checking up on. And sometimes I just realise like, there's certain people that in life like if you're the one always texting them and they're not ever texting you how you are then they're the people you shouldn't be talking to uh, you know I don't have people like that uh, the people I talk to are happy you know to talk to me and vice versa because you have those people around everyone needs those people not everyone has as many uh, I'm lucky in that sense you know but oh god how can I knock the door so hard guys the shopping has arrived. On, on that note, I'm going to have to pause this podcast. See you after the short break. And we're back. So yeah, I had to pause it there because it's a bit too much background noise for my liking. And probably your liking too. Um, but yeah, so I've been keeping in contact with a lot of people. When it was serious lockdown even video calls a lot more um, I find video calls, call, calls annoying because the screen freezes or something or like you can't quite see the other person properly um, but even the sound is pretty bad but now you've got 5G so apparently that's going to solve all the problems and the new iPhone coming out soon the iPhone 12 Pro um, it doesn't come with headphones 
or something else, I think. Or a charge. No, it definitely has a charger. The headphones are something else that it doesn't have. Just to save the environment, apparently. I don't, I, I don't know how that's going to save the environment because people are still going to have to buy headphones separately. It's another cost. And there's going to be a mini version that will cost at least 600 quid anyway. So, yeah, despite COVID, people want new phones. And last year was the first year I ever bought a brand new phone that came out last year, the uh, the iPhone 11. Um, before that, I had the iPhone 7. So it's a huge upgrade like to getting a brand new phone, like something I've never done. They're normally like two or three years old or an older version that come out like the year before. But no, last year I went all the way and I got a brand new phone. So this year is another phone out, like what's the point? Like I haven't finished paying off this one. Why would I get a new one? Like, I, well, I can't until I've paid it off, I guess. I could trade it in, but by then it probably loses value. Like phones do pretty quickly. Um, but yes, yeah, so everyone's going, all the tech people are going mad about that. And of course for me it's the PS5 that I'm really waiting for, the PlayStation 5. Um, which all the games that you've downloaded, like the data versions of all the games, so not the disc versions, all the data versions of games you have on PS4 will transfer over if you use the same account that is. And there's a rumour, just a rumour, that PS4 games can be played on the PS5. Uh, that's something they've never done before, made it compatible from older consoles. Uh, but that might be true, I don't know. I hope it is. Because then I've got so many games I can still play. Instead of having them sit around all these shelves in my room, I'm looking around. What I can see is PS4 games. And PS3 games. Um, and that's going to cost a lot of money, so... If you're a parent and you've got a kid who has a PlayStation 4, they'll be asking you for a PS5 at some point between now and Christmas. Or if you don't get it then, they'll still be asking you and begging you for it. Because all their mates will have it, you know, it's one of them things. When I was that age, my parents um, didn't exactly get me everything straight away that I wanted, they, you know. They made me beg for it, kind of. Um, and, not, you know, it's good not to get what you want when you ask straight away. Because, you know, otherwise, as a kid, if you get everything when you grow up, you're going to realise you get nothing when you want and for free. Or ever. <laughs> Got to work for it, you know. So, you know, it's a different generation now. There's so much tech that kids need and want not need but want and PS5 will be one of them pretty soon and yeah I only know from the point of view of having parents that when you're when you're younger when you're in, in younger days you want something you you know the bit I'll get a job and buy it yourself or you know wait <laughs> till Christmas maybe your birthday but like you know that was a generation that I grew up in, and it's it's different now. Um, everyone's addicted to their screens, regardless of age, pretty much. I mean, my mum will be on her iPad playing Tetris, and my dad will be on his phone. Well, actually, not nowhere near as much. But of an evening, like Sam in my room, I wander into the lounge, and they're all on their phones, and I'm I'm trying to reduce the amount of time. But then again, before lockdown, it makes you think, like, in public, so half the people you see in public, they're on their phone, like, trying to fit in because everyone else is on their phone because they don't want to accidentally, like, have eye contact with another human being because it's so awkward these days, apparently. I don't know what, like, what's awkward about human interaction. But um, it is now, <laughs> if it wasn't before. You know, so in public, if you're not on your phone half the time, if you're smiling, you look weird. People don't smile in public. Uh, people don't not look at their phones. So I'm trying to reduce the amount of time in general. So when I get back to society, I'm not at a table full of people at a restaurant being rude looking at my phone. Because if your phone's there, you want to look at it. If you're in a meeting or anything, I mean, when I was at school, we. We couldn't have our phones out. Uh, you know, use the calculator. 
he were now under the desk, but wouldn't really get my phone out. Um, now, you know, I mean, when I was at uni, you could get your phone out any time, really. I mean, phones are becoming like an, another limb, you know, an extension of your body. So it's really difficult to go anywhere without them. I, I, I went somewhere without my phone uh, the other day and I, it, it felt weird. I mean, I'll be honest, whenever I went Pajio football training, I never really took my phone. I knew if I was going to do a video, but I didn't take my phone to be on it because I'm there to play football, not to be on my phone. Leave your phone at home or first try it and actually leave it in your pocket for one whole journey. Um, and then eventually try and leave it at home. Of course, that's risky if you're quite young or, um, you know, going somewhere alone, alone, but try and reduce the amount of time you're on the phone. Just occupy with other things. Read a book, you know. Um, of course, it's difficult because there's less socialising going on. Um, so you're not really talking to people face to face. You'll be on your phone for video calls and stuff. But when it comes to Instagram and all that, try not to be on it as as much as maybe you are. Because it can affect people's morale. People don't even realise it. Um, they think, oh no, not me. It doesn't get to me, but it gets to everyone. Uh, sooner or later. And I think it was Jim Carrey that said he wants everyone to be rich so they can realise that even money can't solve your problems. And, well, it can't solve your the, the problems in your soul, in your, in like in your, in your mind, you can't solve them problems. How you feel, like, you can probably make them worse or suppress them. But you see a lot of uh, famous people coming out having suffered with depression or anxiety and a lot of things that come with the fame that maybe they had in a small amount before, but it was just amplified by their fame. So yeah, when people wish they're famous. And long to be rich and famous, well, know that it doesn't really solve your problems. And it don't ex exclude you from COVID. It doesn't discriminate against anyone, this disease, this virus. Um, regardless of how rich you are, you could be the President of the United States and you'll get COVID. And yeah, let's not talk about that guy because I can't take him seriously. But um, yeah, I mean, it was inevitable he was going to get it the way he for oh it'll be gone in a week or something he said it'll be gone in a few weeks this virus this chinese virus that he calls it from china as he says uh but yeah i'm gonna waste my time talking about him just gets on my nerves but yeah social media is all these apps are designed to make us addicted to them and draw us to them and it's like slot machines in Vegas. The same addiction when you scroll down. Uh, when you scroll down the page. And then talk about bullying. Most bullying is on there now. Online it wouldn't be face to face. As a kid, people from my generation, we knew what, like, the understanding of a bully is like someone who's trying to hit you or annoy you or upset you at school in some way. Not something that you're on your phone, every time you're on your phone, it's there. Uh, following you around and people that are having to delete accounts and create new accounts just to avoid certain people that are stalking them or bullying them or attacking them online or you go on Twitter and make one comment and everyone goes mad um, and of course if you're famous that's amplified a lot more and people go back and look at tweets you wrote six years earlier and say oh you can't say that but that was six years ago um, but even for no us normal people, things we say online can come back to, to to bite you, you know, come back to haunt you. And I look at old posts I made years ago and I was like, what am I on? You know, I'm looking at them like, that's not me, I don't know this version of me. But we all need uh, time to learn and grow up. Some people never grow up, but... I like to think I'm young at heart, but yeah, I mean, I'm probably not the only one where you feel like, from a parent point of view, your parents just, let's put this straight guys, 
probably know what I mean. Your parents don't want you to grow up, technically. They see you as a kid still, uh, in some cases. And you just need your space. And lockdown has made that difficult. And I just... Well, I said I was glad when I went back to work. But seriously, like... Some parents are like that. They can be overbearing and overly influential on your life without you even knowing. You think you, every decision you make is yours, but is it really? Like, certain, certain people maybe they went to uni because, oh, my parents went to uni and they said I should go to uni, it's the best thing to do. But is that what you want? You've got to think about what you want to some extent. Um, you know, and yeah it's it's not uncommon for parents to be like this to be overprotective of their kids too assume they don't do certain things that they do like you know the amount I drink I can't well I used to drink um, but not home in front of my parents glass of wine here and there but you know when I go out with my mates it's different and it's different for, everyone has different versions the version with their mates and the version in front of their parents and it's <laughs> differentiating between the two and drawing a line between the two because you know you can't act certain ways in front of your parents but like I said when it comes to like uni and things like that you can't do it because they expect you to do it whether you want to or not it doesn't go for every it doesn't mean you can win every argument you have with your parents um, but if you see where I'm coming from like they mean well, they want you to do well and have it easier than they did. But for me, you got to have it, if you have it difficult, then you've got to overcome that adversity and come out the other side a better person. Um, maybe certain advice is important that they give you, but it's better to learn yourself, surely. You know, yeah, maybe they can teach you how to do your tax returns. Or you can Google it, you know. It's pretty simple. And, you know, write checks and all this. Things that schools need to start teaching. Well, I think I had one class about writing a check at school. But, yeah, what I'm saying is, like, this lockdown has made me realise that parents can be overbearing. And try and make decisions for you without you even realising. Decision, decisions uh, that are best made yourself for your own good because not everyone's cut out for uni or some people end up not going to uni and maybe they should have but I have no regrets in my decision to go uni um, there are times where I thought why did I bother but at the same time I'm glad because it opened my eyes to the world of journalism and other things that I might not have known about and other things from the past that I've learned about uh, in the world of journalism that is the history of it and what goes into it and some of it made me not want to be a journalist I never really went to study journalism to say look I'm going to be a journalist full stop uh, my passion was maybe being like a radio talk show host or DJ of some kind but here we are, me on a podcast that I made myself. And this was my choice. Because no parent is saying to their kids, oh yeah, go go and be on YouTube. I mean, you think of some of the great, greatest YouTubers here. Um, KSI. He um, was 16 when like, he, you know, he decided that he was going to take on YouTube full time you know, or younger. And he was playing FIFA for fun on videos. And then you became the YouTuber you see today, who makes music and does boxing and uh, makes all all sorts of videos, and is part of a a group of very talented fellow YouTubers. You know, so you can start from anywhere. Um, so seeing that story, from my point of view, that's where I got a bit of inspiration from to think, you know, and. It, at the same time, it's never too late to start YouTube. I was 23 when I started, way older than a lot of these who did it even anywhere before, way before uni. Before, you know, 
higher education. And I think what I learned at uni helped, like from a journalist point of view, how to present myself on camera. And I've got that confidence that at first I never did. And it, it takes years to get right anything right. Repetition until you get it right. But that's how life is. Like the more you do something, the, get, the better you get at it. The more you're going to improve and learn and perfect that. Uh, your style and your technique. Whatever it is. And I didn't try and worry about what other people would think. And today I'm very proud and people that know me are proud of it too. And enjoy my content. So if I can make a difference to at least one person, job done. And journalists are always looking at that. Everyone, you know, will go, oh, you're, you're a journalist then. N well, I'm a YouTuber, but technically, yeah. I like to learn things and then uh, pass them on to other people. But I don't spread lies like real journalists do. Or, well, the not so good ones. There are honest ones out there. It's just finding them and knowing where to get honest news from. Because this year has been full of fake news. And social media is full of fake news. Um, between Twitter and Facebook. So many fake things people are going to hear. Fake rumours about Covid. And about political things and stuff. But I don't get into Twitter too much. That can be dangerous, guys. When I do get famous, you know. Don't want people digging up my old tweets. That's dangerous. <laughs> Stay off Twitter, that's all I'm saying. Wait, well, in an argumentative sense. Like, Trump should stay off Twitter. <laughs> but, yeah. So, I hope you've taken something, uh, my, my opinion on certain situations, that are not facts, don't take them as facts. Or, the, you know, I speak the truth, or I try to. Uh, with the things, when I speak about myself, well, it's always the truth. With other things, I might not know the whole story all the time. I mean, I study journalism, but in that sense, I'm not as meticulous as a journalist. Um, but I want to thank you guys again. I was just winging it today, literally. Speaking from the heart again. Didn't plan out what I was going to say. And we find ourselves at the end of yet another podcast, guys. 43 of these. God, it feels like I've done so many more. Um, and a lot more to come. More podcasts. More vlogs, more live streams, all on the channel right here. Take it easy, guys. And just live in the moment, or try to. And remember that it will get better at some point. But just bear with the world for now. Or try to. I know I'm trying. Take each day as it comes, guys. Stay humble and... Uh, yeah, take it easy, guys. Peace.